the Nothing Ear Ones are an exciting product but are also way more than just a new pair of true wireless earbuds. Nothing is the new company from OnePlus's co-founder Carl Pei, but it's is not specifically an audio company. It's a tech company, and we should expect a wide variety of products spanning a host of different genres from it in the future. What the Ear One represents in this context is Nothing Zethos, showcasing its approach to design, quality, and possibly pricing too. The Ear One is genesis for nothing, and undoubtedly gives us a glimpse of its direction for the future. Looked at like this, there's a massive amount of weight on the little Ear One's shoulders. They're also arguably one of the most hyped up products seen this year, Pay's considerable fanbase are all waiting for them, and the success of OnePlus has left the rest of the tech community watching the Ear One with considerable interest. Expectations are huge. So, welcome to our new product review episode. If you are new in our channel then please subscribe our channel and press bell icon for notification of our new videos. When nothing released images of the Concept 1, it was clear transparency would likely feature in its first product, and sure enough, it's a massive part of the Ear One's design and identity. The outer case and molded inner parts are made from transparent plastic while the components and battery are hidden inside a white, irregularly shaped, section. The square case mixes curves and slashes, circular indentations, and rectangular metal shapes to great effect. It's interesting and different, yet still pocketable and conveniently sized. The earbuds have a transparent stem, and nothing has worked hard to make sure everything on display looks pretty. Internal components are rarely attractive or positioned in an aesthetically pleasing manner, but the microphones, magnets, and other parts inside the ear one stem are ordered and symmetrical. It looks brilliant. The body is white plastic, and there's a choice of three differently sized silicone ear tips, small, medium, and large, included. No one is going to mistake the ear ones for any other air bud. While they have a short stem design like the Apple AirPods Pro, they aren't an exact copy, and the case is definitely unique. There are wonderful little details too, from the use of a single red dot to identify the right hand earbud, the consistent pixel art style font used across the case and buds, and the ease with which you take the buds out of the case itself. Little things that make a big difference to use and ownership. I've used the Ear One for several months and have carried the case around in my bag during that time. True wireless earbud cases can get some rough treatment and can soon pick up scratches and scuffs, but the transparent finish hasn't picked up any unfortunate marks, and still looks like it did when it arrived. However, I have been more drawn to the stealthy black edition released at the end of 2021, which look really excellent. Overall, the Nothing Ear One earbuds are modern, fresh, distinctive and suitably different from all the rest, effort has been put into the Ear One shape and materials, but has the same attention been paid to the way they feel in your ear? I have been using in-ear and over-ear headphones on a very regular basis for months, have tried multiple different models, and have abandoned those that hurt my ears. The Nothing Ear One are easily among the most comfortable in-ear headphones I've worn. They're very lightweight at 4.7 grams have very little overhang outside of your ear, and the slightly oval silicone near tips seal perfectly in my ear. I didn't need to change from the medium tips fitted in the box, and rarely need to receive the ear ones in my ear, even when cleaning the house or washing the car, when my head is constantly moving and often at unusual angles. If anything, the ear ones were easily forgotten. Even after three hours, my ears didn't ache. I'd place the comfort level as equal to the Apple AirPods Pro, but I'd say they're perhaps a little more secure. The Nothing Ear One use Bluetooth 5.2 and I've regularly switched between an iPhone 13 Pro, an iPad Pro, and various Android smartphones. I've used it with and without Nothing's companion app, and connection has been faultless. Fast pairing on Android is excellent, just open the case and press the pair button and the earbuds are recognized instantly. Range is very good, and I've been able to move from one end of my modest apartment to the other, about 10 meters without line of sight, and not lose connection. Controls are by touch only, and actions can be configured in the app. By default, 
a double tap plays and pauses, a triple tap goes to the next track, a long press cycles through the active noise cancellation modes, and a swipe up and down alters the volume. The entire stem responds to touch and because it's quite small, accuracy is vastly improved as you're not feeling around for the right spot, plus each earbud has the same controls so there's nothing much to learn. I've found the touch control system intuitive and crucially, accurate and precise. I've not become frustrated by it, or felt the need to just pick up my phone and use that instead. A short tone plays to differentiate between the A and C modes, but I'd prefer it if it actually said what mode was active. After a software update, the Ear One has been given voice assistant support, a feature missing at launch. It's configurable in the app and is activated with a triple tap of the earbuds stem. It works as expected on iOS with Siri and Google Assistant on Android, however, it's not possible to mix and match, meaning you can't use Google Assistant on iOS and must stick with Siri. My voice is instantly recognized, and the gesture support is fast and reliable. It's a welcome addition and erases one of the Ear One's few downsides. The Ear One have AAC and SBC codec compatibility, but there's no aptX, aptX adaptive, or aptX HD, no W1 chip for automatic activation of Apple's spatial music feature. It's unfortunate, but many may not notice this lack of wide support at all. This aside, for general listening, I've found the nothing Ear One have easily, comfortably, and very quickly blended into my everyday life. The Ear One's sound has been tuned by Teenage Engineering, a company with decades of experience in audio hardware. In the app, you can swap between the default balanced mode and one emphasizing bass or treble. Balanced is by far the best option with its wonderfully flat tech. For my personal musical preferences, the flat tech mostly works really well. Its success is evident in AKB48 Sustainable where the strong bass line and orchestral section can easily overpower the cute vocals when listening through headphones with a bass forward custom mech. The Ear One's mostly flat tech neatly keeps the vocals centered, and the bass under control. The downside comes when listening to classical music. For example, Holst's Mars, the bringer of war from the planets lack the all-important presence that gives it so much power. The Ear One deliver a bright sound with a tight soundstage and there's some harshness at the top end during complex songs. This is noticeable in Curtis Mayfield's Fall Behind and in his one's mise en scene, where the treble overpowers the mid towards the crescendo at the end of each track. The bass isn't quite as rounded as the AirPods Pro, and they don't have the same heavy thump or warmth as the Cambridge Audio Melomania Touch. They definitely aren't lacking bass, but it's not a strong point either. Unfortunately, the added basic mode sounds a little artificial, so if you want more it may not satisfy. For call quality, I use them as a replacement to my usual Samsung Galaxy Buds Live and Teams and WhatsApp video calls. The general opinion was that the audio was good, and at least comparable to my usual choice, and not all that different to the microphone performance on the phone, in this case, a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I find the Ear One's lack of presence more of a problem than the brightness, but it's not overly noticeable in all listening situations. The flat, natural like makes a lot of the music I listen to sound the way I think it should, and I'd much rather have a brighter sound than one with overpowering bass. Despite these points, I've never felt I wanted to swap to a different pair of headphones to get the sound I want, which should tell you all you need to know about the Ear One sound. You can choose between a light and maximum setting for the noise cancellation, and there's transparency mode too. I left it either at maximum or with transparency, finding little use for the light mode. I either wanted to hear things or not. On the street the isolation is very effective, matching my AirPods Pro but with a slightly less airy feel. You're certainly encased in the ear one's A and C. Transparency mode is better than others I've used in some situations, with a less artificial feeling, minimal hiss, and no discomfort. Sometimes, transparency modes get confused by air movement or when I move my head, but it didn't happen as often with the Ear One. The noise cancellation works very well, particularly considering the price of the Ear One, as it's rare to find it at all, 
Nothing says the ear ones will last for 4 hours with ANC on, and a total of 24 hours use with the case. Without ANC expect 5.7 hours per charge, and a total of 34 hours with the case. Use time can't match the Sony WF-1000XM4, but it's broadly similar to the Apple AirPods Pro. Charging is performed with either a USB Type-C or a Qi wireless charger. Pop the earbuds in the case for 10 minutes and you get 50 minutes of playback with ANC charge the case for 10 minutes, and there will be enough power inside to enable 6 hours of ANC listening. In my experience using the ear ones with a mix of ANC and without, and across two different phones, an iPad, and my Mac Mini, they lasted for about 4 and a half hours. This is close to nothing's claims and strong performance, given the size and weight of the earbuds, the Nothing Ear One are available now through Nothing's own online store and retail outlets including Selfridges in the UK they cost $99 or £99 British pounds. Thanks for watching this video. If you think this video is useful, then please give a like in this video and share with others. Bye for now.